Let's take a look at some of the editing enhancements found within Cubase Pro 10.5. We often find ourselves using two tools a lot. One is the object selection tool, which can move or truncate, add fades, or adjust clip gains. And the other tool often used is the range selection tool. This will allow us to select a range, to delete it, move it to a different location without having to split, or hold down the Alt or Option keys to copy a range. We wanted to combine these two tools to make them a bit smarter, and that's what we could do when we click on this icon to the left of the Object Selection tool, and this will put it into a combined mode. We could also do this by holding down Alt or Option plus Shift and the number one. Now that we have this in a combined mode, it's broken down into two zones. The upper zone will function as the range selection tool and the bottom zone is the object selection tool. So if I wanted to move the event, I could do that. If I wanted to move the range, it just depends upon the zone that you're in. So if I wanted to take this range of MIDI and audio simultaneously, copy it by holding down the Alt or Option key, I can now select the events by going from the object selection mode, go to the right center edge, and I can make copies like so. Now there's several alternate modes for the object selection tool which are still available. My normal object selection mode allows you to pick and choose where the events start and end. Hitting the number one again will put it into moving contents mode. So as I size, I can move the beginning to fall at specific points or the end. And hitting one one more time will allow us to do time stretching. So I could time stretch my MIDI and audio to fit within the specified range. Some alternate modes are also available when using just the object selection tool. So if I hold down the alt while at the bottom, I can split the events. And even though it's split and I go to the upper range zone, I can still adjust my clip volume as well as my fades. If I want to select both my MIDI and audio here and slip the events, I can hold down alt or control or command plus option and go to the lower object selection zone and I could slip the contents within the part. To globally select a range, I could go into the range zone and hold down shift and command or control. I could just come here and globally select a range that I wanted to deal with. And while this is very handy for editing different parts, it's also very applicable for automation. So if we open up our automation lane, I could come here and just draw in little bits of automation. I could select my automation. We could just very easily do our curves. If I wanted to go to my automation points, I could now just bring down each of the points or up to adjust. Again, tilt. I could go from the bottom to move this automation range. We could duplicate by just selecting with the range tool and hitting control or command D and being able to tweak the selected automation again with tilt or being able to adjust how much of the curve is applied. Very simple to work with. Another tool that people will often access in the editing format is after an event has been split is to select a glue tool, especially on MIDI, where you may want to glue the events back together to make one event. Under the edit menu, we can now have a dedicated glue function. So we could just glue that together. And if we want to access that and create our own keyboard shortcut, which I've done, you could just find it under glue and assign your own keyboard shortcut for that particular function. So I've done all this editing without switching a single tool. So you can see how that could really improve the editing workflow. 
as people are doing editing, you're constantly zooming in and out. And people didn't like a particular function of being able to turn on and off the cycle mode when they wanted to strictly be zooming. So there's a new preference that's been added under transport. So if we uncheck clicking locator range, this preference here, it will now not activate or deactivate the cycle range. So this way the loop will not be affected and it will be strictly used as zoom. So you can navigate and find your edits very quickly using that particular function without worry of turning on and off your cycle. Overlapped events have also been looked over as well. So if we have events where we have, let's say a stacked recording, and we look at our stacked recording, we could see all of our different events. Now, if I wanted to choose a different lane or take, we could click on the bottom center and we could see our available takes. And what we see now is this is clearly indicating where the dot is that indicates the active part. We also see our time display on the right hand side. And if we've done edits here, where maybe we want to access our comp tool, we could say, I wanted this particular lane directly there. I could choose to, with my object selection tool, just to remove the overlaps and that will get rid of the unnecessary events. A new function has been added to the normalize. So if we find ourselves needing to deliver our final mix at particular levels, we can now go to our normalize function under processes. And previously we could just deliver in specific DBs when normalizing, but now we could have it go directly to particular loudness units. So if we're delivering for broadcast, we could have it as minus 23, or if we're delivering for a music streaming service, you may want to have minus 14 loudness units. So you can now normalize based directly upon loudness units. The notation editor has also been improved. So let's look at some of our notation functions. We go to our preferences, go to scores, to editing, and one of them will be the mouse wheel to transpose notes. If that is active, I can now select a range of notes and just using my mouse scroll wheel, I can navigate up and down. A secondary preference has been added to make entering in notes much easier. And this is show bars and beats position when entering notes. So if I have my grid set to quarter notes and I go to enter in notes, I hold down the mouse button and I could see my quarter note grid automatically applied. If I want it to be eighth note triplets, now when I press down, we could just see the grid automatically be applicable right there. So I know exactly where it is without having to do all sorts of weird calculations in my head, dividing, you know, my PPQ by quarter or triplet quarters or eighth note triplets. We've also improved naming consideration. So we may have the name carry over from the project window. So here I may have strings, but I may intend this to be violin and this cello. So if we go to our notation settings and we could go to your project and under notation style, we could see some new options for staff names. So we'll activate both of those. And now when I double click on the particular name, I could say, we'll get rid of the name there. And I could say for my treble clef, I want violin and cello. And we could just have that in. I could also choose to have a short name. So I could just say VLN and let me say CLO so that it will also show in non indented lines. So that can make it clearer to work with a new snap menu as well, which can make things a bit easier. One of them that you could snap to is as you move notes that it will stay within the key. So you don't have any unintended accidentals. We could also have some additional functionality for slurs. So if we wanted to snap our slurs to notes, 
But if we just wanted to enter slurs, it's going to be a little clearer as we enter our slurs. So if we wanted to adjust our slur curve, we could just kind of zoom in. And as we do this, it's a much easier to see than in previous versions, and it will print out better. If we have crescendos, and as I want to move the crescendo up and down, we could have that snap so that it's not tilted. Other things that could be applied within the snap is the capability of snapping rest and repeats vertically. Some other improvements that we'll see will be the ability to have a larger time signature, better alignment to the note head and stem, and better PDF export clarity. So as you can see, the new editing features in Cubase 10.5 can really speed up your work. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.